Hey everyone, this is Big Mike, and this is my Stranger Things Season 3 review. So Stranger Things has become an, oh, a phenomenon on Netflix uh, since Season 1. So in Season 1, it was groundbreaking. I mean, you know, we haven't seen any real fresh sci-fi in a long time that was actually good. Character building, you know, and, and all that type of stuff that was really top-notch. So it, it took off, and you know, it's, it's been great. So Season 2 was pretty good. I enjoyed it for the most part, uh, like most people, except for episode seven. But season three picks right back up, and I mean, I, I thought it was great. So the first couple of episodes dragged just a little bit, um, but with the character development that they've, they've already had in place, it's, it seemed like, you know, you just wanna watch and say, okay, I'm still interested to see what these characters have been up to, uh, you know, for the past year or six months, I think they said since it was, uh, season, since season, season two ended. So it's still interesting to see, you know, the characters, what they were doing, what they've been up to. And then, you know, once I think episode three kicks in, I mean, it was very fast paced, very uh, great ride. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Uh, one thing I want to say right now, spoilers. This is going to be a spoiler review. So right now, if you haven't seen season three, you might want to watch season three and then come back and watch this video because I'm about to get into some spoilers for the show. So, once Billy, you good? Okay, once Billy gets taken over by the Mind Flayer and we see the Mind Flayer's plan, I mean, that's when it all kicks off. It started out with the rats, you know, they go into the old industrial park and they're exploding, You're like, what is going on? So the Mind Flayer is trying to build, you know, himself a body or a physical body because, you know, in the Upside Down, he's more so like a, a huge cloud. Uh, so, and it was a piece of him left if you notice in season two, that escaped from Will when he was quote unquote exercised <laughs> from Will's body. So it seems like that piece of himself was kept in our world um, and the, as the rest of him was locked away in the upside down when Eleven closed the gate. So uh, we see scene where, you know, he gathers in all these rats, explodes them, and he starts building his physical body in the real world. So once Billy, and he, he's building an army of people as well to do his dirty work. So they're kind of like sleeper agents, which is kind of, which is kind of cool as well. So, you know, they're, they're acting normal, you know, until they're turned on, you know, like kind of like a winter soldier type thing. And, you know, once they're activated, then they do the mind players bidding. So uh, a lot of the things I liked about the season, um, also uh, bringing in, uh, uh, little Erica Sinclair, she was great uh, bringing her into the party where, uh, you know, she knows about the Upside Down, she knows about the Mind Flare, she knows about the Demi Gorgon, she knows about everything that's going on. You know, that was kind of cool. Um, the actress that played her was, uh, you know, sarcastic. I mean, her introduction in season two was great, you, you know, the whole thing. And um, so it, it ended up, uh, she, she did great, you know, throughout the season, uh, more sarcasm, uh, she also, you know, calls everyone else nerds, but she's a nerd herself because she's kind of like, you know, a mathematician. Um, her relationship with Dustin, uh, you know, was good. Also, um, Steve, of course, Steve and Dustin, their, their dynamic has always been great since season two, and uh, that continued. Um, so, yeah, the season was really good. I enjoyed it. Um, I, I like Billy's kind of, well, he kind of had a redemption arc towards the end where, um, you know, he kind of saves Eleven uh, from the Mind Flayer and allows her to get away uh, at the sacrifice of himself. Uh, but going back to like the character development in this show, because you, you have a lot of shows and movies that you just kind of don't even care about the characters. You know, you watch the movie, there's really no character development. You're just kind of like, man, because just think about if they had done that with like in the MCU, um, in Endgame, uh, you know, when Tony saves everybody, if you didn't have good character development until then, why would you care? You know, so you really care about these characters. You care about, uh, you know, what happens to them because you get invested in these characters because they have because they have excellent character development in this show. Um, and you, these are characters that you know will probably be iconic for a very long time. Um, one of the uh, things that. Uh, that I really enjoyed but or trying to uh, stress about character development uh, is the character of Alexei. So Alexei was a uh, Russian, uh, you know, spy or scientist 
who kind of, you know, throughout the course of the show, once he got captured, he kind of defected uh, to the U.S. because he told, uh, he was telling Hop, you know, what was going on and, and Joyce, like, kind of tell, actually telling them the secrets about what the Russians were doing and everything like that. And it shows you in that season, the character development was so good because this character that you didn't really think was a super important character, once his, you know, demise uh, came, like, you know, once he was killed off, you know, towards the end of the show, you actually was like, oh man, you know, they, they, they done killed Alexi, you know what I'm saying? So like, it, it shows how they really know how to build, you know, these characters. And just like, you, you, you take somebody who you think could be a throwaway character and then, you know, you build someone who you actually care about. Um, that being said, Hopper. That last scene with Hopper, I mean, my goodness, it's like, no! Um, I, I didn't want to believe it, and I was surprised that they did a post credit scene, you know, after the last episode. Um, and I like how also it was Hopper and Joyce who closed the gate this time, because it would have been redundant if Eleven had to do it again. So I like the fact that, like, the Mind Flayer, when it, when it grabbed her leg, you know, kind of infected her, but uh, for the time being, you know, she doesn't have her powers. Um, but in all great superhero stories, you know, lots of times the superheroes lose their powers, but somehow gain them back. And then they'll gain, like, even more power on top of it. So I'm not too worried about that. And I think in season three, uh, I mean, season four, um, you know, maybe she'll get, you know, more advanced powers. Maybe she'll have, she'll be able to read minds, possibly. Who knows? Um, but yeah, when Hop and Joyce were closing the gate and uh, Hop's, you know, was fighting the Terminator guy and he kills him and he had no way, you know, to get out. But when Joyce closes the gate, you know, I, you never see a definitive, you don't see Hop's body. There was no definitive death in my opinion. You don't see a body, you don't see ashes. Yes, you did see some of the Russian scientists get disintegrated. However, um, with Hop, they literally didn't show, they, they showed the scientists and then they showed back to where Hop was standing and it was nothing. And then the post credit scene, if you saw when they were in Russia and the two guards were walking past the cells and the one cell they stopped at and the one guard told him, no, not the American. Aha, aha. In my opinion, that's Hop, he's in that cell. I don't know how he got transferred there. Maybe he jumped through the gate. Um, Maybe when it exploded, he got pushed through. Maybe he had time to jump down before it exploded and got out of harm's way. And then maybe after that, the Russian uh, guards uh, seized him and took him to Russia for questioning. You know, we don't know. Hopefully we'll get answered in season four. Um, but yeah, I don't believe Hop is dead and I really don't want Hop to be dead. He's one of my favorite characters. Um, I, like I said, I really enjoyed this season. I thought it was really uh, well put together, even though the first couple episodes kind of uh, drug a little bit. But after that, it really picked up steam. It was really enjoyable. It was really fast paced. And I can't wait to see what they're gonna do uh, for season four. So thanks for joining me in this, in, uh, for this review. Please subscribe, like, hit the notification bell. Uh, so when I post new content, you'll be notified of that. Uh, please post in the comments uh, below uh, what you thought of Stranger Things Season 3, what you think of Stranger Things as a whole, Season 1, 2, whatever. If you agree with me, disagree with me, hey, put it down in the comments. Thanks for joining me and see you next time.